Today we will start to know what does it mean the first derivative of a function. If you have a function y equal to f of x, y equal to f of x, okay, and you graph it, so let's say like this, any function. So in the y-axis, you have y is f of x, and this is my x-axis. And I have a point, say here, A, and I move from A with the distance h. So I moved from A to A plus h to A plus h. Fine. And I would like to find the slope, right? And I know the slope I should have. I just make it in here. So you have A and A plus H. OK. And in this one, you have the function at A. In that one, you have the function at a plus h, right? Good. So what I'm going to do, I just have the difference between a and this one, and I would like to have the slope of this line, right? Fine. So the slope of this line can be found from the right triangle, right? So I know this one is exactly as this one, right? So this one is what? Yes, it is the difference between A plus H and A. So this one will be exactly H, right? Also, what is the size of this one or the this segment is equal to what? Yes, the difference between F of A plus H and F of A. So this one is F of A plus H. minus f of a. Okay, so if I got f of a plus h minus f of a over h, I know this is what? This is a slope. Yes, this is the slope. But the slope where? in this point or in that point. I would like to have it in the first point, this one, right? So if I would like to come to this point, I will make the H very small. So I, I will come from A, from the right side to A to be very close to A. So I'll make the H very, very small, right? How to make H very, very small? Using the limit and, and make it small so it tends to zero. So I know this is what I call it instead of using all of this one, I call it the first derivative. I call it what? The first derivative of the function f of x at x equal to a, right? So and instead of using of all this notation for the limit, I call it yes, df by dx at x equal to a. At x equal to a. In your calculator, you will see this key. Can you check in your calculator, please? You have a key written dy by dx at x equal to a. Do you have it? Yes, Dr. Thank you. So now you can use your calculator if you would like to have the first derivative at a specific value for X, right? Fine. So instead of writing all of this one, we write it as dv, which is the same as a limit. When X tends to A for F of A, plus h minus f of a 
of an edge. This is what they call it the first derivative or the slope. The business people, they don't like the word the slope. They like the word the rate of a change, right? Yes, they call it the rate of a change. The rate of change, right? So yes, this is, I can call it, instead of the slope for the interior design people, they like to, to know what is the slope for a specific curve or line, right? And the business people, they like to call this one the rate of a change, right? OK. Now, they call it something called marginal. So this is what, yes, this is a new name, the marginal function. Of f of x. So the margin of at x equal to a. In general, in general, the marginal function for any function, let's call the cost function. Do you remember the cost function? Yes, the cost function. It is written C in terms of the number of items. has a marginal cost. Yeah, what is the marginal cost? C dash of X. And it's, yes, I forget to, to tell you. And instead of writing this one, they call it F dash at A. This is to be easy, simple, right? So C dash of X or D by the X for the cost function. This is the marginal cost. Yes, we know something about revenue. So we know the revenue function. It is written R of X and X is the number of items. Yes, this is and the marginal revenue, the marginal revenue is what? Is yes, R dash of X, R dash of X or DR by DX. And we know also we have a profit. So the profit function. The profit function P of X. And we know the profit is what is the difference between the cost, the revenue, and the cost, right? P of X equal to the revenue minus the cost. OK. So once I have the cost and the revenue, I can find the profit. So the marginal profit, the marginal profit is what? Is B dash. What is B dash? It's the derivative of P of X. Do you think all the time we are going to use this definition to find the derivative? It is really boring, right? So what we are going to do, we have a general form for D by DX for X to the power N. It will be, you get the power down and subtracting one from the power. This is how to find this one. This is exactly, instead of doing what? of doing the limit when x tends, uh, sorry, when h tends to zero for x plus h to the power n minus x to the power n over h. 
and you expand this one and subtracting and doing things. And by the end, you end up with this one. OK. This is a formula I would like you to know. Now let's go for some examples for marginal profit, marginal revenue. OK, and check together how to do this one. You are given the cost function C of X. 8000 plus 200X minus 0.2X squared. Remember, this is not a linear cost. This is not a linear cost because it has a square here. If you don't have this part, it will be linear cost. And this one will be the fixed cost and this one will be what? The cost per item. But because you have X squared, this is not linear cost. Oh, it's fine. Now, how to solve part A? What is the actual cost incurred of the manufacturer? The 251 first refrigerator. OK. So what you are going to do? What is that? What did this statement saying? Why he said the first 251? Why he said, if he said only 251, I will substitute high here by 251. But to have the first 251, I will have the difference between the cost of 251 minus the cost of 250. Remember this number. Remember this number. And let's go for finding the rate of a change of the total cost function with respect to X when X is equal to 125. We know the rate of a change is what? Yes, the rate of a change is D by DX for the cost. At what? At X equal to 250. Do you have your calculator? Guys? Yes, do. Can you press in your calculator? Casio FX nine nine one ES plus. Yes, you press in what? The key DY by the X at X equal to A. You have a window like this, right? So what you are going to type here? You type what? 8000. Right? You open bracket 8000 plus. 200. How to write X in your calculator? Is it alpha? And this parenthesis, right? This one or that one? Uh, the first one. Excellent. That's good. Uh, now, we put the D over AX in uh, calculator. You have a key. You have a key in your calculator written DY by the X and X equal to A. This is a key in your calculator. Once you press it, it will allow you to write what is Y. Y is 8000 plus 200X minus 0.2X squared. How to write X squared? You have X squared in your calculator, right? And you type A. A is what here? 250. If you press equal, what do you have? Guys. I can do it by hand, right? This derivative by hand, the derivative of the constant is zero. The derivative of 200x is 200. The derivative of this one, I'll get the power down, so I'll have 0.4x. This is d by dx for c of x. I'm just substituting by x equal to 250. 
So I replace X by 250. Okay, so what do you have? 200 minus. One hundred. You cast the same value from your calculator. One hundred, doctor. Excellent. So two hundred minus one hundred is one hundred. Yes. Compare this to one. We get the first one. We get what? Ninety nine point eight, right? And this one is one hundred. So if you compare them, they are very close to each other, right? So when he's asking you to find the first, whatever the number is, you should remember this is exactly like what? The marginal value, right? Okay. So instead of having the number, the first, 250 numbers, so this is in calculation. The first 251, okay, the actual cost is the cost of 251 minus to the 250. So it will give you this is the accurate value. If you would like to have the approximate value, you will go for the marginal function. This is a marginal function and you can do it by the calculator. If you compare the marginal with the difference between 250 and 251, they are very close to each other, right? Okay. And this is the explanation. Instead of going through, substituting in this, you know, uh, annoying one, so it is easy to use the differentiation or the marginal. Now let's go for this one. This is a cost function. Find the marginal cost. What is the marginal cost? The marginal cost is what? Is the derivative, the first derivative. The marginal cost equal to d by dx for the cost function. So d by dx for, what's the cost function? 0.001. X cube minus 0.08 X square plus 40 X plus 5,000. Now, as I told you, this is the only formula I would like you to know how to differentiate X to the power. You just get the power down and subtract one from the power, right? This is what I'm going to apply in my case. Equal to, I have 0.0001. I'll get the three down and subtracting one from the power minus, this is a constant, keep it as it is. And here you get the power down and subtracting one from the power plus you have 40. If you get the power one and you're subtracting when you have zero, and this is exactly here, x to the power zero. So when you get that zero down, it gives you zero, right? Now, three times this one is 0 0.0003 x squared minus two times 0 0.8 is 0 0.16 plus x to the power zero is one. So you have plus 40. This is the marginal cost. Next. Is asking me to find what? Find the marginal cost when X equal 200. So. The marginal. Cost. When x equal to 200, you have two choice, okay? Use the calculator.
or do it by hand. I have the marginal cost, which is I call it C dash of X. If I do it by hand, so I have C dash of X equal to 200. So I am going to substitute by X equal to 200 in this one. So it will be C dash of X equal 200 will equal to 0 0.0003 and 200, sorry. So it is equal to what? 0 0.0003 and instead of X, I write 200 square minus 0 0.16, 200 plus 40. OK. Calculate this one. What do you have? One twenty eight. One twenty eight. OK, now how to do it by the calculator? As I told you, you have a key called dy by dx. And x equal to a. Press on it. And write your c of x, which is 0 0.001. Sorry, 01 x cube minus 0 0.00. 8 x squared plus 40 x plus 500 and this is d by dx and you have here you put a a is 200 you will get you will get the same value just try it to avoid yourself a mistake and you can complete the rest of this one and by substituting by 300 and then by 400 and 600 to find the marginal when x equal to 300 and the marginal cost at 400 x equal to 400 and the marginal cost at x equal to 600. Interpret your result. How to interpret your result? In this case, as a business student, this is a derivative by hand. I substitute by 200 in the derivative. This is a marginal cost at X equal to 100, 300, 400, 600. OK. The interpretation for this one. Yes. This is Electra. This is a cost function for this company. Actual cost for reducing the 201 first DVD players is approximately $20, right? The actual cost incurred by product on the additional DVD player when the level of production is already 300, right? And now you can carry on for the interpretation as a business student, right? OK. And this is the curve for the cost function. OK. We have another definition. We call it the average cost. Anything with the average, you have to divide it by the total number of elements. Even the average for in the statistics, you have the total over the, uh, uh, the sum over the total number, right? This is the average. Exactly the average cost will be the cost over the number of items. OK. If we would like to have the marginal for the average cost, so we are going to differentiate this one, right? OK. Now, let's do this one. How to find the average cost? The average cost is what? The average cost is equal to the cost 
over the total number of items. This is in words. To explain it to someone. How to write it in, in, in mathematics? The average cost, we call it C bar. Yes, I remember when you have the mean, they call it X bar, the mean for the sample. They call it X bar. So the average is the same as the mean. So we call it C bar of X. Is equal to the cost function is C of X over the number of items is X. This is the average cost. And if we are calling the marginal average cost, the marginal for the average cost. I know the average cost is what? C of X over X. The marginal means I'm going to differentiate. Yes, I can write it instead of this one. I just write CX over X and I write dash over here. OK, so the, the marginal mean the derivative. The average it mean I divided by the number of items. So this is the marginal average cost. Let's go for our. Question, so the average cost will equal to what? C of X is 400. Plus 20 X. In this case, the cost is linear cost. If I'm asking you, this is a linear cost or nonlinear cost. This is linear cost. What is the fixed value? Fixed cost is 400. What is the cost per item is 20, right? If you remember the first section of our. Content, right? OK, 20 X over X. This is the average cost. Now find the marginal average cost. I know this is the marginal average cost is D by DX for my average cost, which is 400 plus 20 X over X. OK, I just remind you, if you have 20 plus 5 over 11. You can write it down as 20 over 11 plus 5 over 11. So you split the fraction. Yes, so I can go for D by DX and I split the fraction. I have 400 over X. Plus 20 X over X. Now I can cancel out this X with this X and I can take this one up. I remind you again, if you have one over X to the power N and you would like to take this one up, you change the sign of the power. OK, so it will be X to the minus N. So now I will have what? D by DX for 400 X to the minus one plus 20. Now what is the result? Yes, I'll get the 400. OK. Doctor, we can see. OK. I'll get the 400. And the derivative of X to the minus one, I get the minus one down. And subtracting one from the power, right? And I know the derivative of any constant is zero. So plus zero. This is the result. So I can minus 400. Again, X to the minus one, I'll get it down. Make it X to the power two, uh, X to the minus two. I get it down to be X to the power two. This is what? This is the marginal average cost. Catch it? Now, the last part, what are the economic implication of your result? I don't know. I have to read it for you. As a business student, you know it, but for interior design or information system, they might not know it as well. Okay. He said 
since the marginal average cost function is negative for all admissible values of x, the rate of a change of the average cost function is negative for all x positive. That is mean c bar x decrease as x increase. Okay. This is the main point. Yes. So I have a negative over here. This is what make the, this is negative and anything squared is positive. So I end up with a negative. So the interpretation is the marginal. This sign tell me the marginal average cost is decreasing, right? OK. And here is the graph for this function. Let's go for this one. Could you please do this one for me? I'm waiting your answer. OK. I'll stop recording until you do it.